Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. It's so good to see you. So good to see you. I'm so happy. Me too. I'm always nervous about this because I always think like, oh, at the last minute, it's not going to work. But it always works. <laughs> yeah. I was just telling everyone that I wanted to have my nephew come say hi. I know. I love your nephew. <laughs> but he uh, he started crying, so my sister took him for a drive. So. Oh, shoot. So Harness is excited to launch the first 100 days reimagining America. Uh, it's an Instagram live series. Harness sees this as a year, um, the year of opportunity, a chance to reimagine, a chance to reimagine our future where everyone can thrive. The first 100 days of a new administration sets the tone for the next four, four years. We're excited to be in conversation today to help us envision a more joyful, brighter future for everyone and we're so happy to kick off the series with um miss piper perabo and uh, <laughs> uh, so piper is an artist and she's also a harness community member and a fierce advocate for underrepresented communities recently she has supported uh my work through uh, sacred um to uplift concerns with indian country covid19 pandemic Thanks, Allie. I'll just say hi, everyone. Um, and let me introduce my friend, Allie. Um, she's the co-founder of Protecting the Sacred, which is a project that's housed at Harness, uh, that's working to protect Native culture and elders by supporting frontline efforts to combat COVID-19 in Native country, particularly in her own Navajo nation. And she works at Harness, and she's a screenwriter. You kind of do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You're busy. Uh, yes. <laughs> I remember when you first started coming out on social media about what was going on in Navajo Nation with COVID-19 and how dire the situation was there. And it's one of the like great examples of the power of social media and how to use your platform to sort of share information, not just with your community, but also ask friends who care about your community or allies of your community to start sort of thinking about how can we get together and talk about this? How can we spread the word? Because it wasn't long after you started talking about it on social media and spreading the word on social media that then I started seeing like news articles happening, what was going on. Um, World Central Kitchen came in, Sean Penn was down there, like all of a sudden people just started coming and it's a powerful tool. I mean, you're a very good organizer, so you are use it better than most, but um, how's it, how are things there now? Um, things are better. Um, they're getting better. And which is really great, because we, we did get it real hard. Um, the death toll, I was so concerned about just even a few weeks ago. Um, but the, the vaccine has arrived here. And okay, yeah. And so it's we're actually we're doing really great with the vaccine rollout. I just saw something I posted it earlier from President Nez, um, who's the Navajo Nation, the president of the Navajo Nation. Um, and he said that we've reached our goal of, uh, so it's almost the end of February, and um, over 100,000 people have been vaccinated in Navajo Nation. Great. And the population that lives within Navajo Nation is around 150 to 170,000 people. Oh, wow. So that, yeah. that's a really high percentage that you've got vaccinated. Yes. And it's, it's really great news and, you know, just a sigh of relief. And I, I, it's really amazing because tribal communities have been hit very hard in this pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, but we're actually like, I'm just so proud of our communities because um, we've, you know, been given the, the vaccine to roll out within our communities. And, you know, that to me speaks to sovereignty. And we've been able to really take control of that and be strategic about how we're rolling out the vaccine. And it's been really successful, not just in Navajo Nation, but in a lot of tribal communities across the country. A lot of people were talking about um, when they were talking about changes in culture um, that are coming up under the new administration. And then the conversation that's been happening around sports, like um, the Washington football team that changed their name, um, which was so cool. And then the when the Kansas City team played in the Super Bowl, it came up all over again, which is really useful because we can have sort of a conversation around a large na uh, national event. Can you talk a little bit about why that's important and um, the cultural appropriation of mascots um, and that kind of stuff that's going on? Yeah, yeah, it's so interesting that that 
happened in the first 100 days, right? Because I think even though it has nothing to do with politics and, you know, what the Biden-Harris administration can do, it, it happened within their first 100 days. And But I, I think it does speak to um, the continued dehumanization of Native peoples, and that's really what it comes down to. Um, when we're still portrayed in... in um, characters, um, where it, it does affect our our self esteem and our mental health. I know that you are really powerful in getting out the vote in Navajo Nation. There was such a cool video of um, riding horses to the polls, and I think that when we talk about these issues and the attention of the federal government in this administration and others, it's important to remember what a strong voting block um, Native people are, um, both for president and Congress and also uh, state elected officials. Okay. You could really see the organization of the nations and how they were a force to be reckoned with, even in Georgia, in that yeah. special for Senate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, I hope they remember that, you know. <laughs> they better, because if not, they're going to get voted out. Yeah, we we showed up. And, and you know, as a people that, has been screwed over time and again by the government. Like we, we still showed up, you know, I think that's powerful. Um, but, you know, also to sp speaking to representation and I think it, we're at a point um, in history where we're, we don't want to be invisible anymore. And so that's also um, something that we're fighting against uh, combating invisibility. Um, there's a great Vogue article a few years ago that said the new um, invisibility is the new form of racism against Native Americans. Hmm. And I absolutely believe that. And I think everything that we do moving forward, you know, we, we have to uplift uh, our indigenous brothers and sisters, um, you know, especially when it comes to things like even climate change, because our ancestral knowledge um, will contribute a lot to that fight. So I think moving forward, whatever the new administration does, I hope they do sincerely um, create a space for us at the table, um, not for just one person, but for many of our leaders who have a lot to offer. And I always think when there's a cause that you're working on to take your cues from local leadership is the way to kind of get, if you're new, you know, for anybody who's watching this who's kind of new, when you want to get your foot in the door and start with activism, you want to see who are the leaders that are constantly showing up and um, on the ground. And I kept seeing women like you, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, and I, when I realized that our values were so similar, I thought, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I can just step in behind these strong women that are already leading and see how I can support. I'm going to ask you, um, you know, you're, you're an amazing ally. And like, if you have um, any advice for anyone who wants to get involved, uh, you touched on it a little bit before, but um, folks who aren't from the community and, and want to get involved in Native or, um, um advocacy for other communities do you have any one is um the land acknowledgement is something that i didn't know about until i started paying more attention to um what's going on and um you if you don't know who were the people that lived on the land where you are now you can start your self-education right there um I'm in New Jersey right now, so I'm on the land of the um, uh, Lenape people. And um, when you have a meeting or you're at a gathering, you can do, um, you can start a gathering by acknowledging the land that you're having that meeting or gathering on. And I think that's a, a really, it sounds really simple. I mean, the first time I did it, I was super nervous, but it sounds really simple. But by acknowledging sort of how we're still participating in colonialism, I think it's a very powerful thing to do. And it makes us more mindful of our history and how we're participating in it. And it also makes us more mindful of the land. And I think the more we take the earth into consideration, the more passionate everyone will be to protect it. Yeah, so thank you, um, Piper. Um, thank you for helping us kick this off and um, it's gonna keep going. So stay tuned for the next one. Um, and yeah, uh, make sure you wear your mask, get vaccinated. <laughs>
um, if it's available to you. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get through this. And when we do, Piper, I hope you come out to Navajo Nation. I can't wait.